for uh, spearheading the efforts in organizing and designing this first call for action. Uh, we also have my colleague Isabel Chavez, who's uh, helping with the uh, technology today and, and who will be managing uh, the, the platform uh, today. So this is our first uh, of our uh, Q&A session. We have a second one, which is scheduled um, on the 6th of November, which is probably more suitable for uh, folks uh, from Asia and Oceania. I think our group, uh, target group uh, today is probably the Americas, Africa and, 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 and Europe. Um, this uh, is a, a one, hour se one hour and a half session that we are organizing to basically exchange uh, with uh, uh, decade stakeholders uh, on how to prepare for this first call for action. Um, as you are uh, probably aware, the first call for action was issued on 15th of October, so last week, and, and will be open for, for three months. And the idea is really to try to uh, really excite our communities that they're working at the science and policy interface, uh, as well as different group of stakeholders, to come forward with uh, you know, transformative uh, decade actions at the level of programs. So um, we have a, a short presentation to kick this uh, process and give you a little bit of uh, common information. Uh, this PowerPoint will actually also be uh, available in the, uh, in, the, in the chat. We'll provide the link in the chat box so you can also download this. Um, the idea is really to keep uh, this at a really informal level. Um, clearly, designing a decade of ocean science is not an exact science in itself, so it's really about uh, managing an interrelationship between different groups and, and also managing expectations. So we, we hope we have most of the answers for the questions you might come up with, but it's also possible that we might not have those, uh, those answers at, at hand. And again, uh, please, uh, you can count on us for, for going, coming back to you at a later stage in case we, we are not able to, to address all of the questions. But again, uh, you know, you will also have a second chance if you are able to connect also to, to the second session on the 6th of, uh, of November. We want uh, this session to be uh, interactive. Um, so uh, there are different ways to interact. I'll just uh, ask my colleague Isabel to bring up the next slide. It should be coming up in time now. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay, so if, of course uh, the idea is that uh, you ask us questions and uh, to do this we invite you either to um, type your question in the question box uh, and as a, as a moderator for the session I will uh, I will pick them up and answer them or ask Alison to answer this. Uh, but you can also uh, ask for the floor directly. Uh, to do this, please type your name in the question box. And again, uh, I will, we will give you a floor and you can unmute yourself. Um, but otherwise, I would really invite uh, all our participants and there are many of a few around today. We have, I think, a record of 262 registered participants. So I'll really invite you to uh, to keep your, your microphones muted uh, at all of the times. Uh, please note that this session is being recorded. So again, this is also a, a resource um, for others or for you if you want to, to, to go back to certain points. Uh, and the recording will be, of course, available um, on the Decade website and, uh, and also through the Ocean Decade social media channels. Um, that's all I want to say for as, a, as an introduction. Uh, I would like now to invite uh, my colleague Alison uh, to run us through some of the main uh, ideas and elements of this first call for action, and then we will basically open up the floor for, for, for the interaction. Thank you very much, Alison. Uh, over to you. Thanks, Julian. Um, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As Julian said, this is a first for us, so we're very excited to 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 be here. Um, also very excited to see the Ocean Decade moving into its action phase, which is what this Call for Decade action really represents. So if we can go to the next slide, please, Isabel, with the vision and the mission. Thank you. So I want to give you just really a brief overview before we hand the floor over to you of some of the key elements that are underpinning this call for action. Some of you may be aware of all of this, so we ask for your patience. Um, but I think it's important to bring everybody up to, to the same level of information. 
So starting with a reminder of the Decade Vision and Mission. Now, now this and everything else that I'm going to present is contained in the implementation plan uh, for the Ocean Decade, which is the guiding document uh, for the next 10 years, essentially. Important things to point out about the implementation plan itself is that it's a strategic non-prescriptive framework, and I think you'll see that represented as we, as we go through the different elements, and that it is a living and dynamic document that is going to evolve over the, over the next 10 years. So they're key things to keep in mind mind when thinking about the implementation plan itself and I'll come back to where you can find um, the implementation plan and how it fits into the call for decade actions. But to, to talk about a little bit about the, the vision and the mission, the, the vision statement that you can see there, the science we need for the ocean we want, has really become a very recognisable tagline the decade. Um, one key thing I think to point out here, which is something to, to keep in mind as you're thinking about the actions that you'd like to submit to the decade is that ocean science in the context of the decade is very large. It includes natural and social sciences, local and indigenous knowledge. Um, it covers the interface between land and sea, between ocean and atmosphere, between ocean and cryosphere, as well as the infrastructure, data capacity and technology that are essential to ocean science and that lead to a strengthening of the science policy interface. So we're really looking for actions related to ocean science in the broader sense. And the mission, I think, underlies this further. Um, it really aims to combine three key elements that are important to all facets of the, of the decade. So first of all, the decade is about transformative ocean science. It's not about business as usual. It's about ocean science that is transformative because of the questions it's asking, because of who's doing it, because of where it's being done, how it's being done, or very importantly, how it's being used. And that leads into the second element where we're looking at ocean science that leads to solutions for sustainable development. So it's not ocean science purely for knowledge generation, it's really ocean science targeted towards action, targeted towards solution. And this means that we need to look at ways in which we can link generators and users of knowledge. And it needs to, 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 to look at ways that ocean science can lead to the strengthening of the science policy interface. And the third element of the mission statement, connecting people in our ocean, is really trying to put the emphasis on the fact that we're looking also at ocean science that can incite behaviour change, whether that be at the institutional level, whether that's at the individual level, but ways in which science can lead to action or solutions that can change humanity's relationship with the ocean. So if we can go to the next slide, please, Isabel. So how are we going to achieve this very ambitious vision and mission? Well, this is where the, the implementation plan comes into play. It describes a decade action framework that I'll present um, here. I think it's really important to understand the different levels of this framework. And obviously the implementation plan contains a lot more uh, detail about this, but to give you an overview. So if we start from the, from the bottom up of this uh, figure, so tangible decade actions. These are really the initiatives, the projects, the activities that will be carried out over the next 10 years. Now, these are not pre-identified in the implementation plan, but they will be identified by diverse actors, including, again, both the generators and users of hopefully working together through collaborative processes that include co-design and co-deliveries of solutions. They will be identified, these actions will be identified via calls for decade actions, such as the one that we're talking about today, which is the, the first in the series. And they'll be submitted by proponents, by actors such as yourselves, and endorsed against a set of endorsement criteria to, to make sure to, 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 to really um, confirm them as part of the collective and shared effort of the decade. Now, this endorsement process is very it's important first, it's important to make sure that we can trap, uh, track and map actions so that they contribute to the collective impact. And it's important so that we can see where gaps exist so that future efforts can be, can be focused. As we move up the figure then, these actions are going to be organized around a series of decade objectives. Now, these decade objectives, of which there are three, represent the overlapping steps in the process as we move from the ocean we have to the ocean we want. And the objectives uh, are these, represent these iterative steps and they relate to the identification, the knowledge that is for sustainable development 
of that knowledge and then the use of that knowledge and capacity development underpins all of these steps in the process. Now we know there aren't clear boundaries between these steps, but again, these, these three objectives of identifying the knowledge, generating the knowledge, using the knowledge with capacity development throughout are really important to help proponents of actions and also the decade coordination and, and governance structures organize and track actions. And again, see where there are gaps and where more focus may be needed. At the third level then moving up this framework, actions in addition to, to fitting into the to the to the steps in the in the process different objectives. Actions also need to be developed to contribute to one or more of a series of 10 ocean decade challenges. Now these challenges, which are again identified in the implementation plan, represent the most immediate and pressing priorities for the decade. And they really aim to convene stakeholders around collective and shared action. Um, over the course of the decade, communities of practice will be facilitated and will evolve that will encourage and, and help co-design and co-delivery of actions to meet these challenges. And of course the challenges will need to evolve over the life of the decade to respond to, to the emerging the actions at this at this at this first layer they will map to the objectives um, along this 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 process as we move from the ocean we have to the ocean we want and they will also map to one or more of the ocean decade challenges and together this collective effort will contribute to the achievement of the seven decade outcomes that really represent the ocean we want by 2030 and I think for many of you who are familiar with the decade these seven decade outcomes are, are, are quite um, well known uh, characteristics of the of the future ocean that focus both on the desired characteristics of the ocean and the desired characteristics of our relationship with that ocean. And then of course all this together by contributing to the decade outcomes we will have, uh, uh, have an impact and a contribution to the 2030 agenda and related global and regional policy frameworks. So if we can move to the next slide please Isabel. So let's let's talk about the decade actions because this is really you know this is what the this is what the call is about. It's about identifying potential ac actions that can be endorsed to, to become part of this collective collective effort. And the implementation plan identifies four types of of decade actions. And I've identified in yellow here those actions that the first call for decade actions is really focused. programs. So these are really the actions that are global or regional scale. They contribute to one or more of the decade challenges. They're long-term, multi-year, um, they're multidisciplinary and, and typically carried out over a number of countries. And they typically include component projects and enabling activities. So the decade projects, which are the next level down, are really the more discreet and focused undertakings that, that typically fit into one of these decade programs. Now that's not the case for all of the projects. Some projects may be standalone, but typically it's a, I think guess it's a fairly traditional um, type structure where you have your, your overall program that are fitting into that program. And the, the projects can be developed progressively and, and, and can be identified over time as the, as the program goes on. Decade activities then, which are more one-off standalone type activities that can contribute directly to outcomes or objectives or challenges. And these might be things like a communications campaign or a conference or a, or a media event. They're really the, the, the one-off activities that will take place throughout the decade. And then the contributions. Now, as you can imagine, uh, an undertaking of the size of the decade, a very ambitious undertaking, will need resources to be mobilised and resources in a, in a vast variety of forms, whether it be financial resources or in-kind resources. And so in the, in the parlance of the implementation plan, we talk about decade contributions as the resources that are being mobilised to support the decade, whether it be in-kind or financial, and whether it be contributions for the costs of decade actions or for the coordination functions of the decade itself. So if we can move on to the next slide, please. So let's come to the, to the actual call for decade action. The call for decade actions number one of 2020, it's very much the first in a series of, 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 of calls for decade actions. And I think that's really important to point out that this, there will be many calls for decade actions over the over the life of the um, of the decade. Um, we're looking at calls for programs, for example, twice per year. But this is really a first 
in a series that is being carried out now, even before the end of the formal preparation phase, to allow us to start identifying some of the building blocks of the, of the decade. And as you will have seen in the documentation, it really focuses on two major types of decade actions. First of all, global or major regional programs. And secondly, contributions, so those resources, those in-kind or financial resources to decade actions or coordination functions. Now, actions that meet one or both of these um, of these types of actions and that also contribute to post-COVID-19 recovery efforts are extremely welcome. We've obviously seen major effects of COVID-19 on ocean science in terms of sustainability of infrastructure, um, institutions, capacity development, et cetera. So we are also encouraging um, proponents of potential actions to look at ways in which their programs may be able to address uh, post-COVID recovery. As Julian mentioned, the call is open until the 15th of January, but no decisions on the, on the call will be made until the first quarter of next year. This is because the decade doesn't officially start until 1st of January 2021 and the governance and coordination structures that need to make decisions on, um, on endorsement of decade actions will not be in place until that time. For this particular call, there are no geographic or themat thematic restrictions and there is no limit on who can apply. Um, as I mentioned, the call will be followed by other calls for programs and projects in 2021. And it may be that these future calls are more focused on a particular theme, such as one or more of the Ocean Decade Challenges, or on a particular geography. But this first call is very open in terms of themes and geography. Early in 2021, we will also be opening a process so that submission of or requests for endorsement activities and contributions, so these are the, the, the one-off standalone activities as well as future resource mobilisation, can be submitted at any time. Um, they will not be subject to, to, to predefined calls for decade actions in the future. I think it's very important to point out that the decade in itself is not a funding mechanism, and this call is not a funding call. But one of the advantages of participating in this call is that, is that through having recognition as an endorsed decade program, you may, the, the IOC or the Decade Coordination Unit, when it is established, may be able to help make connections to funders or resource providers. And this is, is what we really see as, as one of the, the added values of having an endorsement under a decade, that it does open up new opportunities for resource mobilisation. So that means that potential actions can be submitted through this call without having all or any of the of the secured funding. And you will see questions about that um, in, the, in the submission form so that that helps us get an idea of where interested parties may need help connecting to, to funders. Just a final comment, um, UN-led decade actions will be registered via a parallel process. It's a very similar process in that UN-led actions need to demonstrate how they fulfill the endorsement criteria, how they, how they fit with the challenges and the objectives and so forth, but it's a, a slightly different process that we, can, um, that we can talk about if there are any specific questions on UN-led actions. If we can move to the next slide, please. I just wanted to talk quickly, uh, for those of you who haven't seen, about the resources that are available on the Ocean Decade website, and hopefully you've all seen the more detailed link to the place on the website where these resources are located, because we recognise sometimes it is not the easiest website to navigate, so I can certainly put that link in the chat while we're answering questions. But there's obviously the implementation plan that is now available in the six working languages of the United Nations. Um, this is, as I said, the guiding framework for the next 10 years. There's a much more digestible summary version of the implementation plan also available in six languages. Specifically for the call for actions, we have a guidance note for applicants, which we hope provides most of the information you need, um, but no doubt there are things that we've forgotten. A frequently asked questions document, which will be updated, for example, after this session, if there are major questions that come up um, so that we continue to keep that as a, as a live document. There's also a small flyer that you can use to, to, to communicate or share information about, um, about the call for decade actions. There are, of course, the links to the online submission, and I'll come back to that in the next slide, and a list of resource persons um, and ways to find potential partners. And I'll come back to that in the very last slide of this presentation. So if we could move to the next slide, please. So the process for submitting the proposed action, as I said, on the Ocean Decade website, there is a link to an online submission system, SurveyMonkey, as, as, as the 
case may be here. Um, and, and via this system, you can really, there are, there are two things that you can do. First of all, if you have an idea for a decade action, but you're not yet ready to go, or it's not well enough developed, or you're still looking for partners, or you're not ready to actually submit it, there's a, an option when you first log in to register an idea or register interest about a decade action. And at that point, you can give a quick summary of your action. You can talk about which challenges you're aiming to contribute to, and you can ask to be put in touch with potential partners. And I'll come back on the next slide in to, 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 to explain more how you'll be put in touch with potential partners. But that's a really good option if you're not yet committed to the idea or there are things that you're thinking about but you're not quite sure, there's a, a very simple way to, to register an idea, get further information and eventually be put in touch with potential partners who may be interesting, interested in collaborating with you. If, however, you are ready or further down the track you are ready, then you can go into the, to the actual submission form itself and you'll be asked to choose, choose whether you're submitting a program, uh, a major global or regional program of work, whether you're looking at a contribution, whether that be to decade actions or to decade coordination functions, such as through hosting of a decade collaborative centre or a coordination office. And these two forms will take you through a series of questions, which we have tried to make as simple and as um, easy to understand as possible, which basically try to tease out some basic information about action, try to understand where it fits into the decade challenges, where it fits into the decade objectives, ask some questions about funding, as I said, whether funding is secured or whether you need more funding, whether you're still looking for partners that you would like to, to, to collaborate with. And finally, there are some questions about communications, because obviously we'd like to, to for the endorsed programs would very much, and, and contributions, we'd like to very much work together on joint communications leading into um, 2021 with the many um, major ocean events that there will be, as well as obviously the events specifically related to the um, to the start of the decade. On this last slide then, before we really open up to, to, to Q&A, as, as I said at the outset, you know, the principles of co-design and co-delivery between generators of knowledge, between users of knowledge, between diverse actors from NGOs, from Indigenous and local knowledge holders, from governments, research institutes, private sector, philanthropy, there are so many groups that we are already talking to and that are interested in being engaged and, and the decade is about providing a framework for those different groups to come together. And so we're very much encouraging you as you're developing your decade actions to collaborate, to reach out to, to partners, to create new partnerships and to find ways to bring diverse actors together around common actions. So again, there are resources available on, 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 on the website. As I mentioned in the previous slide, as you are either registering interest or submitting your program or contribution, you are asked if you're still looking for partners and if you uh, if you agree to have your um, your contact details shared with with partners who may be looking to 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 get involved in decade actions. On the Ocean Decade website, then you will find a list of contact names of the Decade exec Executive Planning Group members, so that's the EPG members, who can facilitate connections. So those EPG members are a group of, of, of 1920 ocean leaders who have been ad providing an advisory role for the implementation um, plan and for the decade preparation process. And throughout this call for decade actions, they've all taken on a responsibility either for a region and or different challenges. And by contacting them, they will be able to help you make connections with others who are working in similar areas. Similarly, there is a PDF that you can download, which I think is, is still empty for the moment because we're just getting started, but which will be updated um, every few days or every week, depending on how much information comes through, but which will list the contact details of other proponents of decade actions who may be looking for collaborators. And that's where we'll start using some of the information coming through the, um, through the, through the website. So do keep an eye on that as new versions are uploaded so you can um, start to see who may, be, who may be looking for collaboration. And then finally on the, on the website, there's also a link to oceanexpert.org, which is a a portal which contains a large number of um, uh, experts and specialists working on different ocean issues, which can also be an interesting database to, to find potential partners. And then finally, before I finish, we want this process very much to be a dialogue as much as possible. As Julian said, again, this is the first time that we're doing this. It's the first call for decade actions. I'm sure we'll learn a lot. I'm sure we don't have all the answers either during this session or even maybe in, 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 in other discussions to come, but we very much want this to, to be a dialogue as much as possible. You have the email address there, which is being monitored daily. So please do not hesitate to, to reach out, 
if you have questions or if you need more information um, as, as we're going through this process together. Um, but perhaps I'll leave it there and hand it back to Julian. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Alison. Uh, I, I hope, dear colleagues, that it provides you with uh, additional information about the, the objective of this call, but also, more importantly, how you can contribute and, and, and propose your, your ideas uh, in the context of the UN decade. Clearly, uh, this is going to be a not going to be a linear process because there's a lot of interaction that needs to happen between different groups who are, for example, uh, working on similar issues in different regions. And it is our role as a, as a secretariat to try to, to get these communities to work together, to cre really create this collaboration that, that, we are, uh, uh, that we require and which is really underpinning the, the whole philosophy of, uh, of the decade. In 2021, uh, I think we will be better equipped to manage these, uh, these interactions. We will have a, a dedicated platform uh, where different communities will also be able to, to co-design their actions. So this is something that, that will come in, in, the, in the future. Okay, dear colleagues, so it's now really time to hear from you and uh, for you to, to pose your questions. Let me remind you that either you can uh, type your question in, your, in the question box, and I already see that uh, we have some contributions there, um, or you can also type your name and, and, and request for the floor, and, and we will unmute your, your mic so, so you can uh, make your, your intervention. So let me start going into the substance and start with the uh, first list of questions. I'll, I'll take those as they as they come um, in the the way they, in the order they, they were received. So our first question here is from Professor Stella Williams um, and relates to uh, African nations are very poor in small scale fisheries quality data collection for policy formula for policy formulation. Also, the welfare of fisheries folk uh, not encouraging. What are the roles of ocean decade actions in this regard? Um, well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll start. And then Alison can, can fill the gap or she can also answer some of the questions. I think uh, this, this whole um, question of data collection and capacity to collect data to, to uh, inform decision making, to inform uh, sectoral policies, whether it's uh, in terms of fisheries is at the heart of the, of the decade. In fact, if you look at the, the, the different the decade challenges and the decade outcomes, uh, the decade, there's a decade outcomes which is uh, very much focused on, on, uh, ocean, on the productivity of the ocean and the sustainable productivity of the ocean and capacity to sustain economic activities and livelihoods. Um, and, and for that, we, we are looking for different type of actions, actions that can really help to inform policies. So indeed, Data collection is, is very important and uh, in our discussions with the Food and Agriculture Organization, this was one of the uh, uh, kind of top priority that came up in, in their concern and, and in their understanding of what the decade could, could bring to, uh, to, to, to food security and, and, and basically uh, improving the knowledge base of, of, of fisheries. So we would definitely encourage uh, actions in, in, in those areas. There are, of course, uh, since uh, you, you, there's reference here to Africa, the issue of, uh, of capacity development and transfer of marine technology, which is also a, a kind of cross-cutting element of the decade. So we would really like to see uh, some action at that level in terms of building capacity, in terms of engaging end users and the, in the, the, the definition of, uh, of some of those actions as well. So we, we think it's... Um, I think this, this issue falls quite nicely within the, uh, the, the decade actions. Um, I don't know if Alison, you want to add anything to that? If not, we'll go to the next one. Okay, the next question is, uh, we need to know in details the endorsement criteria. So yes, indeed, uh, this is part of the information package and the resources which are available to, um, to, to all participants. Uh, again, uh, we invite you to look at the implementation plan, uh, which is uh, on the website and, and part, part of those uh, documents. In the, there's a section there in paragraph 39 that describes a, a set of criteria, and the criteria are relatively broad in the sense that, of course, we want the decade action to, uh, that are being proposed to respond to the decade challenges. Uh, we want those to generate a, you know, the use uh, of knowledge and understanding of the ocean with, of course, a, a specific uh, contribution to the SDGs, which is a little bit our kind of uh, 
overarching framework within the, 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 the delivery of science in the context of this decade. Uh, we would like those actions to be co-designed and co-delivered. So it's really engaging end users from the start and from the design process of, uh, of those actions. Uh, when some of those actions are going to result in uh, new knowledge, new data collected, we would like this data to be uh, available to the whole community in the whole wide world. So the issue of open access, of having a, a shared and, and discoverable uh, data and information which are generated by Decade Action is, is very important. Um, we would like to also foster collaboration, collaboration amongst uh, different type of scientific disciplines. We talk a lot about, you know, the inclusion of social science, but, you know, in concretely, we would like to see this, these actions with, uh, you know, natural, physical, oceanography, social science, uh, so very much interdisciplinary in nature, uh, but also the issue of a traditional and uh, local knowledge. Uh, you know, this is something that the decade would really like to to promote in in increasing uh, the use of these knowledge uh, systems and, and replication of these knowledge systems. Capacity development is also a criteria uh, which we would like to to, to promote, uh, as well as of course the diversity and equity aspects. So gender. Uh, issues uh, is important and the decade should promote uh, the mainstreaming of uh, gender issues as well as uh, ger generational. Um, in, the, in the preparatory phase of this decade we've uh, worked very closely with a, a group of early career ocean professionals and uh, this group is now becoming more formal in getting uh, more organized and, and, and we think it's very important to really have this dimension in all of the uh, decade actions we, we, we are um, promoting. So of course um, those criteria uh, are not not weighted uh, and, and, and basically uh, you know it's not necessarily one which is more important than the other one uh, but I think what's important is that basically proponents uh, you know somehow demonstrate uh, the, uh, the alignment uh, with those criteria when, when they when they come up with uh, the proposed actions. So that's uh, that was a question on the criteria. Uh, now maybe next one, um, Alison. Uh, is eco ship building concerned by the call for action, not paper, call for action? What, what's your take on that? I, I think um, I think we'd need to have a little bit more details about what the what the program actually entailed. There's um, if there's no reason why it couldn't be. I mean the 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 call for actions is very focused, as we said, on programs that are working across countries, across disciplines, with with multiple actors, and are looking at translating or using ocean science to to find sol solutions. Now the technology and the infrastructure and and and, and research vessels are obviously a very important part of that that are, are leading to action and to to science of solutions could be a could be a very um, valid program so certainly yes I, I think there's a potential there but we'd have to have more information about what the um, about what the the program actually entailed and, and seeing how it fit into the challenges and the objectives and and the criteria Right. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to the uh, next question from. Um, sorry, and I should mention uh, the name of, a, of the, the people coming up with the question. So, uh, Tekla Kaiser, could the program also be uh, the combined efforts of a number of marine institutes undertaken at scale over a number of years? The work would include international stakeholders, but a group of national institutes would run the overall program. So I, I've, I'll, I'll take a stab at that one. Yes, absolutely. Yes and yes. I mean, this is very much uh, in the spirit of what we are looking for, for this specific first call for action, which again is at the program level. And as described in the presentation by Alison, we are talking about uh, multi-year efforts, international in nature. So we know that there are networks out there, international networks focusing on specific issues, for example, ocean health, uh, ocean observation, ocean literacy, and and uh, those bring together national uh, stakeholders. Uh, so indeed, uh, there's a I think a huge opportunity to tap those networks and, and encourage them to, uh, to 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 contribute uh, through through dedicated uh, thematic action. So I, I hope that answers uh, that 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 question. Um, 
Okay, the next question from Vili Kuafalu. The online application does not seem suitable for collaborative multi-country programs, and it is asking for one applicant name and one institution. Please clarify how a multi-partner application be submitted. Thanks. That's a very good, uh, very good question. Uh, and indeed, uh, the, the the application form, the, which is uh, being run through a Survey Monkey um, uh, application, uh, allows you to it basically opens two paths. One, if if you already have a, a, a proposal which is well defined, which is uh, you know you, you know what you want to propose, you already have uh, existing partners identified then you, you can you know, fill in the table. But it also allows you to express your interest for a specific area of collaboration. And I think in this context, uh, this is something that uh, we will be somehow uh, uh, supporting in terms of trying to find a, a bit of a matchmaking uh, process by a, a, a encouraging uh, different uh, you know, proponents who have a common interest to work together. So to do this, um, they, they can, you know, there will be a, a, a file which will be available on the website, which will register all the uh, letters, uh, all the um, expression of interest that will have been received, uh, including the name and also the, uh, the email address of a, of a group of a, a person who's proposing such action. And this is why also we are asking for the proponents to, to to make sure that they are okay that we share their email address uh, because basically that means that if you agree to be on that list um, of expression of interest that means that you might be contacted by other groups in order to work towards a, a common submission uh, and then in terms of the process i, I guess once uh, this, uh, this this coalition those uh, collaborations have been established it's just agreeing within one uh, the group who is going to submit the proposal and just have one proponent uh, submitting, but on behalf of a, of a, of a coalition or a network. Alison, perhaps, you agree? Yeah, perhaps just to clarify there, there is actually, we do actually, yes, we do have, there needs to be one applicant who is the main contact person, but then there's a box under that where we actually ask for the partner institutions. Um, that box can take more than one entry so it's a it's an open text box and the idea was that you would list all of the different uh, partner institutions in in that box so try try that if you see it's not working if there's a technical issue let us know but if it's a if it's a question about a technical issue of not being able to put more than one institutional partner partner in there i think we have fixed that issue Great, thank you. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next question from Mangali Rokamora. Uh, good afternoon and thank you for this webinar concerning the endorsement of the Decade program. I would like to know what do you mean by will consist of component projects? Does it mean that we have to have panelized projects and not only activities within the program at the time we fill up the endorsement form? Thank you very much. So I'll, I'll try to answer that one. Uh, no, it doesn't mean that you need to have already uh, pre-identified projects, which are again more focused uh, uh, interventions and actions on a on a, on a given specific on a, on a given topic. The idea is that those programs that we will identify through this first call for action, and again, we might not get all of the programs of the decade uh, identified. We should also leave uh, room open, door open for 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 future calls, which will uh, maybe more specifically call for specific type of programs. But the programs do, do not necessarily need to come with projects. But the idea is that once we have those programs endorsed at the decade level, we would envisage that uh, maybe a, a you know, more uh, uh, focused projects will, will be proposed at a later stage. So under each program, we should see some kind of ecosystem of actions uh, emerging. Uh, which can be at the level of project, but also at a, at a much more activity level in terms of, for example, organizing a conference or, or a communication campaign. So it's not a requirement to have a, a subset of projects already identified. I think the idea is really to have a, a more a large scale program uh, at this stage. And then in the future, of course, uh, possibility for projects to be uh, affiliated to that program. Okay, um, I hope that that answered that one. Um, 
I'll, I'll pass on that one to you, Alison. Um, so this is from Natalia Gilardi Lopez. I will offer an online continuing education course for teachers of basic education about ocean literacy through the Brazilian territory. The course would be offered annually throughout the decade and would have a potential to reach 500 teachers per year. However, the course would have to be in Portuguese to reach this audience. Would this type of educational initiative be valid for this goal? It's yeah. Look, it's a really good question. Ocean literacy is, of course, a major priority of the of the decade, and it's uh, represented in the in the outcomes and in the in the challenges. We are anticipating and hoping that there will be some major ocean literacy programs that come through this current call. And my gut feeling just reading in this brief description is that this type of initiative may be more suited to the project level to fit into a broader international program around international um, around ocean literacy that that works at the international level um, so it may be that it's something that would come through a, a second or a, a later call for decade actions, which is more focused at the um, at the project level. But certainly happy to take the conversation offline and, and look at it in some more detail if that would be useful. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Let's move on. Um, we have from Octopusti. I, uh, I don't know if it's a real name or not, but uh, can someone ensure that the login and registration system of the Ocean DK portal is operational? Okay, so please do let us know if uh, what is the specific issue you are facing, and then we can we can try to assist you with uh, with that. Uh, in theory, the form uh, should be accessible. I think we checked it. Uh, I checked it certainly uh, earlier today. Uh, but we, uh, you know, we, we can never hide from a, a technical glitch. Uh, so please do let us know what, what, what the issue is. Okay, now I'm moving to Senya Pebrica. And the question is, are there any particular details about communication plans that you require from an organization? Do you have a format of a required communication plan? Uh, thank you. And this is from Senya, the ocean, the One Ocean Hub. Uh, so we are actually, uh, of course, you know, communication is a very important uh, element of the decade, and we have been working uh, in the last two to three years to uh, to raise awareness about the decade because this is really starting from scratch and and, and really, uh, whilst at the same time also defining the implementation plan and the objectives of the decade. So it's been a bit, bit of a, 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 a kind of iterative process. Uh, but we are, uh, you know, uh, formalizing a, a an ocean decade strategy, which uh, which will be um, will be available towards the end of the year. But in addition to that, we are also developing a, a, a communication package uh, that we would like uh, stakeholders, particularly stakeholders at the national and, and regional level, to use for their own communication uh, on on the decade. So for that we will we will provide uh, information and, and access to those resources. Uh, so you can also become somehow a bit of an ambassador for the decade within your organizations and really use the decade to trigger and communicate proactively about what you are already doing and what hopefully you might also do in the context of uh, of the decade. Alison, do you add something on? Yeah, perhaps just to add from a very operational point of view, in the form where we ask for a communication plan to be uploaded, if you have one, there is no there's no required format. It's really just to get a sense of what you're already planning to do, so that the in the, so that we can align with the initiatives that Julian was was talking about. If you don't have a communications plan, that's fine as well. It's really just to to get as much information as possible that so that we can can look at opportunities to to jointly communicate um, through some of the initiatives that Julian was mentioning. Okay, then we have a question from uh, Dr. Adir El Ashmi. Uh, clarification about the endorsement criteria. I think I already answered that question uh, earlier, but again, if you you need additional information, I, again, I invite you to consult uh, the, the implementation plan, which has a, a clear description of those criteria. Yeah, I tried to put them in, in the chat box as well, but they're a bit long, so I'm not sure if it came out very clearly. Um, so it may be best to go to the implementation plan to have a look. You can see them, yes, indeed. Um, 
Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, so this is, a, I don't have a name for that question. How can we protect artisanal fisheries who, to, to adopt uh, sustainable fishing practices? Um, well, uh, again, that's um, by uh, developing a better understanding of uh, the, the, the the, 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 the work of artisanal fisheries in terms of data, in terms of uh, understanding uh, the ecosystem services uh, linked to artisanal fisheries and, and, and also, uh, you know, how this links to the characterization of, uh, of the marine ecosystems that, that, that are supporting those, uh, those uh, human activities. Um, but in, in, in a sense, uh, I think the decade uh, is also geared towards the development of specific solutions for, for fisheries, sustainable fishing practices, um, as well as, for example, uh, uh, the establishment of marine protected areas, which is also one way to, to uh, you know, re, re, recover uh, fishing stocks uh, in certain areas. So I think this is a something that, that you know, it would be great to see some actions being proposed at the level of artisanal fisheries. Um, again, we, we we look forward to to see some. And again, uh, also um, you should liaise with a food and agriculture organization, which is very active in in some of these areas to uh, to, to promote and propose uh, decade actions at that level. Okay, I'm moving on to uh, George Cummings. Um, Greetings, uh, greetings. Uh, also, two years ago, UNESCO decade fall call for interest proposal. I got two emails about received my interest proposal and being reviewed soon. That was the last email. Uh, what happened to those proposals? Well, I think, uh, George, I think the issue is that uh, those proposals came probably uh, too early in the process, to be completely honest with you, as, as you can uh, see, and, and I'm sure you've uh, heard from uh, Alison's presentation, the um, the preparation phase has taken a, a quite some time, and the priority has really been to understand what you know the, the, the communities out there wanted to do. Uh, we've organized more than 11 regional workshops to bring communities together to identify knowledge gaps, capacity development gaps, and this uh, uh, these workshops have been really f feeding uh, the development of the implementation plan. And we wanted really to have this bottom-up approach in terms of uh, coming up with a a set of priorities that are really that have a sense at the global level, but that also uh, resonate with uh, the priorities of, uh, of regions in terms of conservation, in terms of, uh, of uh, knowledge generation, um, and so on. So um, the those proposals that you have submitted two years ago, I think you can now start thinking about resubmitting them. Of course, if they align with the criteria, because they now we have a criteria, now we have a plan. Uh, so that should really drive uh, your, your your ideas and your proposals, and of course we are, uh, you know, we are uh, looking forward to to receive those and to consider those. Yeah, um, perhaps just to add that it certainly was not a wasted effort. Um, all of the the information that came in was reviewed meticulously and was actually used in a very productive way to identify the challenges, to identify the endorsement criteria and so on. So they were the, the proposals were definitely used, but in a different way to influence the preparation of the of the implementation plan. And as Julian said, now is the time to really relook at them, repackage them and, and send them through the process that has been um, has been identified to to accept um, the, the decade actions. Thanks. Um, okay, now I have a question from Raisa Mayer. Uh, Alison mentioned that potential actions can be submitted without secure funding. Would this also be true for uh, decade programs or are programs required to have secured funding before submission? So I think again, the, the answer is that uh, no, it's not a requirement. Uh, and in, indeed, I think one of the value proposition of the decade is to uh, somehow also help good ideas to uh, become a reality and to be funded. Uh, even though uh, Alison mentioned that you know the decade is not a funding uh, mechanism, we do not have a pot of money that, uh, that the UN has given us. Um, but uh, having said that, we really feel uh, that uh, you know once decade programs, even though they are not fully uh, funded, 
are endorsed, uh, there will be a, a, a lot of visibility given to, to those actions. And we will work uh, closely with uh, uh, Vedicate Alliance, with uh, Vedicate Advisory Board to, to, to try to, to bring additional support um, to this uh, to, to this program, so that they can really achieve their full uh, their full potential and, and ambition. And to do this, this you know uh, those, those those resources might come through through national uh, alignment of budgets, uh, national allocations, but also possible contributions for 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 for, for programs in in priority areas that have been uh, identified by the decade. Alison, you want to add anything on that? Nope, that sounds. That sounds perfect. Good. All right, let's go to Fabrizio Lagasco. Are technology developments included in the expected actions from uh, opposing stakeholders? Alison, do you want to say something? <laughs> Yeah, look, it's a really, it's a really good question, and and certainly I emphasised a lot the fact that this is about ocean science solutions for sustainable development, and technology and innovation play a huge part in that. So what we would certainly encourage is for those working at the technology end of the solution spectrum to be working with generators of knowledge, so the scientists, the NGOs, or or, or others who are generating the knowledge, to develop joint actions through co-design, through collaboration, so that the the, the actions that you're putting together really fit into those 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 different objectives that we that we went through in the presentation. So looking at the identification, the generation, and then the the ways in which technology can can use the ocean science that is being generated. So certainly technology has yeah, a very a very important place to in the in the decade itself, but look for ways that you can collaborate with ac other actors along the along the value chain. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, uh, Jean uh, Everett. At this stage, are you more looking for projects or programs to be proposed? Uh, it is indeed programs that we are inviting through this first call for action, uh, but of course, in starting in 2021, we will be looking also for, for projects. So please uh, keep those ideas uh, um, warm. If, if you have uh, uh, already some uh, some uh, some initiation of uh, uh, of actions that you want to, to propose. Uh, now, going back to Senia Fibrica, uh, can an organization submit a global program to be endorsed and also apply to give in-kind contribution to support coordination function of Decade? Uh, can we apply for both functions through one application? Thank you. Um, so again, uh, and this is good that, that you mentioned this because this is really the, the other coin of uh, this call, uh, the other side of the coin uh, in, in a way that um, we are looking for programs, but we are also looking for uh, institutional support uh, to help with the coordination uh, of, of the decade. And this is basically in two forms. Uh, this is in the form of um, hosting decade uh, coordination offices. And generally, this would be uh, uh, member states who would come forward to host such a, such a, such a, an office because this will require, a, a, for example, the establishment of a seat agreement with the UN. So quite heavy in terms of a, a procedure and bureaucracy. But we're also looking for a decade collaborative centers, which is a, an easier and, and lighter process whereby um, certain institutions would agree to uh, take on um, some of the coordination because we also need to realize that uh, the IOC of UNESCO is a is a small organization, uh, and, and we need to rely on existing partners out there to, uh, to to help us with uh, with a decade and help everybody with a decade. So this is a, a really an invitation also for, for some of those uh, institutions who have the expertise, who have the resources that can allocate uh, staff time uh, to to serve a decade to come forward. Uh, in terms of a process, I, I think uh, we would require two submissions, right? Uh, I think we yeah just just from a technical point of view we couldn't work out a way to do it um so you would need to 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 put in two applications but going through that same link just clicking a different box each time okay thank you uh we will move to the next one from geraldine foville uh, will there be a directory of potential partners available where anyone could register and specify their area of expertise 
uh, in this way, project and action investigators could look for specific expertise and contact the potential partner directly. Yes, absolutely. That's that's the intention. Uh, again, that we are doing uh, in a bit of a clunky fashion through this uh, first uh, call for action, but eventually this is something that that we want to improve at the technical level uh, through the, the platform that will be, be put in place in 2021. Um, but the on the on the website on the page for the call for action. Uh, you will soon see uh, uh, available for download a, a PDF uh, file which will provide information about uh, uh, basically potential partners that have expressed an interest for specific actions as well as a, a, a short description of their actions and potential regional scope so that you can then understand uh, uh, what, what the action is about and you can also contact these people. And I'm going to try and put that link in the chat now because it's. Um... It's within the actual text of the of the of the landing page. So let me put it in the chat so, chat so you can see it directly. Although noting that it is still empty at this stage, so please send in information um, and then we'll start getting it filled in and updated. Uh, okay, and then I have a question from Andrea White from uh, DFO. Uh, I cannot view the question chat. Any advice? Okay. This was sorted out, I think, Andrea came back in a bit later and said it's sorted out. So I think we're okay on that one. Okay, moving on to the next one. Jean-Manuel uh, France. Uh, World Expo 2025 will be happening in Osaka on New Mishima, Dream Island. Ocean will be a way to arrive. Maybe a World Ocean Decade Pavilion to promote effective solutions. Like that, that's a great idea. Uh, Yes, uh, questions are of course related to resources, but indeed the World Expo 25 is a uh, is, is a, an important uh, event, and there are always uh, strong participation from the UN in, in this World Expo. And generally, having a UN pavilions uh, is certainly a possibility. And within that, I think we we could we could um, uh, see to what extent a a, a a TK pavilion could be there. I think that would be excellent. Thank you for that uh, suggestion. Uh, moving on uh, from Mawa Ahmed. So if we are, if we have any further questions or missing information, we should contact the email at the website. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a way to get uh, to us and the DK team. Um, okay, then moving to Edward Sankondo. Uh, Edward, uh, good to uh, to see you again. <laughs> Two questions uh, from Tanzania. Um, how can I find potential partners uh, who, whose the ideas for decade actions match mine? So I think that what we just described, uh, that process in terms of uh, uh, expressing your uh, you know, your interest for specific topics, uh, and then and then having access through the file, um, which will be updated on a regular basis. We I think the intentions. To, uh, to, to update this at least uh, once, if not twice a week. Um, and then, can I look uh, can I look for potential partner as an individual, or sh should I be affiliated with certain organization? I think we, at this stage, uh, because of the large scale of um, what we're trying to achieve, and we are talking also programs, uh, I think it would be good to be affiliated uh, with institutions. Uh, so that we can really, uh, you know, upscale and and, and use uh, the the whole uh, firepower of of those institutions in, in moving forward with, with these actions. So this is our, our advice. Please, you know, uh, liaise with uh, uh, with your your local uh, supporting organizations or or, or with the university. I believe you're with the university uh, as a way forward. Okay, uh, we have a question from uh, Srivinasa. Uh, sorry, Srinivasa, yes. Um, yes, uh, who is also an IOC colleague. I wanted to know if there is a, any minimum criteria of, or expectation in terms of resources, fiscal or human resources, if a center is interested in taking up co coordinating role for the decade. Do you expect such offer from an institution or member states to be received through the national focal point? Thank you. Um, so uh, I, I don't think this is uh, something that we have uh, completely uh, defined. Uh, it really depends on uh, what is the scope of uh, that coordination, whether it's, for example, coordinating uh, 
dedicated generally uh, you know, in a one ocean basin, let's say the Indian Ocean, for example, or it is uh, you know, uh, coordinating more on a thematic area, whether it is, for example, I don't know, ocean literacy or capacity development or ocean observation. So, uh, and of course, uh, it, has, uh, it has differences in the implication and the, the resource uh, requirements that, that is needed. Uh, what is for sure is that you know, there will be some, some need to identify uh, a staff time uh, to, to make available to VDK. Um, once we have received those uh, requests and we are going to re receive requests uh, at the institutional level, I think if those are sent by member states, that uh, you, you know that's that's an add-on, I would say, because that also uh, indicate that uh, this is also maybe a national uh, uh, kind of uh, support uh, which is uh, being being put forward. But what's what's important is that uh, once we receive those uh, those proposals, that we work together with the different institutions in 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 looking a little bit about. At the feasibility of uh, of such coordination, so we will require, for example, uh, conducting a, a, a feasibility study, uh, so that we can really assess uh, and make sure that you know the institutions that come forward uh, are, are are fully equipped to to take on those uh, those uh, those coordinating functions, and then uh, this will require once uh, this is done a establishment of a MOU. Um, between between uh, between IOC, UNESCO, and and the and the relevant partner, or with another UN uh, organization, because uh, remember that this is not a an IOC UNESCO decade. We might have also uh, UN partners who are uh, moving forward with uh, uh, some of the coordination function of, uh, of the decade, and this is also another channel for for so those proposals to come forward. Alison, I don't know anything I need to add on that. No, I don't think so. I think just really to emphasize that particularly around these contributions, you know, I said in the presentation that we hope this is a dialogue and I think particularly around the contributions and the coordination centers, this is somewhere where feel free to, to reach out for discussions before submitting um, so that we can we can discuss and shape ideas together to make sure that they're, they're the most tailored and that includes the the financial and human resources that would be um, would be needed because I think it will be save a lot of time down the track if we start having those discussions early. Thanks. Okay, I see we still have a, quite a lot of questions. That that's great. I hope we can uh, try to go through this in the, in the uh, half an hour we have in front of us. So let's go to the next one. Um, Antonio Pascual uh, from the University of Lisbon. Uh, do you foresee a niche for capacity building and ocean literacy actions? Alison, you want to have a stab? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Um, that's a, a, a very clear yes. Uh, the Ocean Decade challenges include reference to capacity building and ocean literacy in two of the challenges. Um, the objectives are underpinned by capacity development and ocean literacy appears in the objectives as well. So very much so. This is, as I said at the, the outset of my presentation, ocean science includes the capacity development, includes the ocean literacy, includes the, you know, the, the tools to incite behavior you change to move towards the ocean we want. So we're very much hoping that we will see programs related to capacity development and ocean literacy coming through this call. Um, and if you're interested in, in linking up with other partners working on that, please do keep an eye on those tools that we mentioned um, to see how we can coalesce different actors around these same themes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, now going to a question from Murat Gunduz. Uh, what is the meaning of large-scale mention uh, in, in the submission? So large-scale, um, at the level of programs, we again, uh, this first call for action is for decade programs. So the, 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 the larger scale of actions as described, uh, you know, in the four categories of, uh, of decade actions. So we're talking about actions that have a scope which are global or regional in scales, which have addressing one or more decade objectives that are going to be generally multi-year, um, interdisciplinary and, and, and international. So multinational uh, uh, engagement is, uh, would be a requirement for those decade programs. Uh, and of course, later on, they may trigger uh, you know, smaller scale actions, uh, i.e. projects and, and enabling activities. Um, I'm now moving on to Omnia Ibrahim. Uh, the UN decade, the aims as a science we need, the future needed for the ocean to be clean ocean and predicted. 
uh, to be so by making an active initiative. That's a long question. <laughs> Let me try to find the question in there. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think that question is a bit too long. I'm sorry, but uh, if innovative uh, initiatives as real by making innovative bank of ideas through the learning and the connection. I, I think it's perhaps the idea of of um, having youth and 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 citizens identifying scientific research and data that could be used to to underpin programs of work under the decade. Um, is my reading of it, and my apologies if I've misrepresented it. But if 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 that is the question, I think um, there's certainly a role for si citizen science within the decade. But again, in the form of programs or projects, and it's area where perhaps through this call for decade actions, different actors who are working together around um, citizen science can come together and develop major regional or, or international programs of citizen science that could contribute to one or more of the ocean decade challenges um, and involving youth and, and, and community in that. So I, I hope that has answered the, the question. And again, feel free to, to reach out if there are more specific issues on that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, thanks for uh, for that, Alison. And, and I think also the concept of uh, somehow incubating, incubating, you know, uh, innovative ideas so that they can grow into decade actions. Uh, that's something we're very keen to uh, to, to promote. Uh, so this can be done, especially with the engagement of youth, because uh, you know of the energy and and, and the and the uh, awareness about uh, you know uh, new technologies that 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 there is there. I think there's a lot of uh, potential uh, sources for, for innovation. So how we do this, uh, whether we organize this through example, through the existing uh, network of uh, early career ocean professionals, that's one possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you should think about uh, linking up with that group um, or also working at the regional level uh, in, in certain areas. So that's something that, that, that uh, we, we, we are keen to, to pursue. A uh, question from Diana Schneider-Meyer. Uh, do transfer do transfer and ocean literacy projects combining science, art and technology have any chance to get endorsed? Alison, you want to have a... Yeah, look, another, another big yes. And this comes back to the, the earlier question about ocean literacy. Um, certainly the implementation plan identifies the role that arts and humanities um, have to play. We talked about the role of technology. So a program that combines these, these different groups and these different facets of ocean science would certainly be something that would, um, that would have a possibility of, of getting endorsed, provided it, you know, it fulfills those same criteria of contributing to ocean decade challenges, meeting the endorsement criteria, fitting into the objectives and being at the scale, particularly for this first call that we are, that we are looking at. Great, thank you. Uh, next one from Malin Rosengren. Uh, can you please discuss why programs and projects should invest the time in cementing a proposal? What is the added value beyond the ocean we want? Excellent question. I think that's a that's that's a very good one. Why should you take the time to uh, you know fill up a, a form um, where there's not necessarily going to be resources coming at the end of this? Um, I think this is a. I think there are different uh, elements there, and indeed. Uh, we need to be clear about what is the value proposition of, uh, of the ocean decade. I think, first of all, it's really uh, contributing to a global effort, uh, which is going to be visible, which is convened under the UN. And, and you know, the UN still has this uh, uh, convening power and, and a lot of stakeholders, member states are looking at the UN to also come up with a, 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 you know, multilateral processes to solve some of the global issues uh, the ocean has. Are facing so you are you can be part of that uh, of that that movement because I think at the end of the day we are talking about a movement. Um, the other aspect is that through the decade it's really about connecting people, connecting people who uh, have a, a common interest, who are already working on similar issues. But I would say more importantly is to connect with the ones who don't know about your work or who uh, you know can bring uh, uh, some value to your work by uh, bringing you know, new, new dimension, new field of knowledge, uh, by bringing data, by bringing information. So it's this concept of uh, uh, collaborat collaboration and co-design, which uh, I think we are, we are also trying to promote here. And this is why in the motto of the decade, we, we say, you know, uh, 
coming up with sustainable solution and connecting ocean and people. Uh, so that that element is is very important. Um, the funding, yes, okay, we cannot guarantee that um, you know uh, resources will necessarily be uh, identified, but we believe that. Uh, by getting the decayed uh, uh, priorities somehow uh, embraced by different group of stakeholders, governments, private sector, uh, philanthropy, uh, we can start aligning those funding processes uh, so that they converge and that they try to uh, complement each other uh, by, you know, uh, through nesting approach for national, the regional, and the international level, but by contributing some to a set of common priorities. And those priorities are the decayed priorities that we are putting forward. So in a way, um, I think, I don't want to say that there will never be uh, uh, decayed programs or actions that are going to be funded, because we hope that we are going to be able to influence the, uh, you know, the resource mobilization uh, global agenda. And, 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 and by doing so, uh, Directly or indirectly, uh, additional resources will go into uh, your field of work, uh, and also in specifically in in in, in the um, in the required uh, actions. So I think this is a. Uh, I hope this is worth the effort, and and we need to, we need to try at least, and we need your support uh, in 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 doing that, uh, and you can be sure that from our side we will do whatever we can to uh, really try to give visibility to those endorsed actions and, 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 and act a little bit as a facilitator so that we can uh, uh, help with uh, resource mobilization. And this is also one, one of the uh, uh, mechanism that we're putting in place, which is this, uh, this Decade Alliance, where we try to bring together uh, the champions of the Decade uh, who are already investing in terms of financial resources in the decade actions and to, to try to get them to influence others to continue. And perhaps just to add to that, I mean, it's it's a question we have been we have been challenged on, and, and I think Julian's given an excellent answer for the value proposition. And on the other side of the coin, we've also tried to make the process of submitting and requesting endorsement as simple and as light as possible. We understand that for all of you who are developing programs, who are seeking funding, who are you know looking for grants, there's already an enormous amount of work with you know, different forms and, and, and templates and so on. And we don't want to add significantly another administrative burden. So we have tried to make the, the, the process as user-friendly as possible. Next year, it will improve. We understand that it's a little bit clunky still at the moment. And the same thing will go for the annual reporting that we're asking um, for proponents to to provide so that we can have aggregated data on progress against the decade that again we won't be looking to add significant additional work in in terms of what we're asking you to 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 report back so on the one hand we will be working yes very hard to make sure that that value proposition is very strong and that you are seeing the value um, for all those reasons that Julie enlisted and at the same time trying to make the process as light and as agile and as simple as as possible for you to be engaged. Thanks Edison. Um, okay I have another uh, very good question from uh, Jean Everett here. How much does science need to be the primary emphasis of a proposed action versus ocean uh, protection, resilience or climate mitigation? Uh, and, and, and where subsequently science and knowledge would be generated only as a secondary result of the action and programs. Alison, I want to... Uh, yeah, it's a really very, very good question. And I think it's a balance, right? Because the, the decade is about science for action. So obviously we want actions to be under you know action to happen on the ground and to be to be generating science but the science still needs to be an important part of of what is happening and i think in a lot of in a lot of the examples that you've cited there about ocean protection resilience or climate mitigation the science is happening but it's not necessarily explicit or not necessarily very visible and what we would ask is that as you're developing and 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 proposing these programs that you make it very very clear and explicit to the through the through the application process where that science is because i think yes a mix is is great but we need to be able to understand where that science is and how it's being used to 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 drive future future action right thank you the next question uh from maxim kutrachi can a program based on marine science education for 
primary and secondary students be part of the Ocean Decade. I'm a board member of AMEA Asian Marine Educators Association. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the issue of uh, ocean literacy is, uh, is something that's been recognized from the start as an important uh, objective of, uh, of the decade and which is very much an underpinning objective because it kind of cross cut, uh, you know, across different uh, dimensions. So uh, in the implementation plan, there's a dedicated section on ocean literacy. We also want to be, you to be aware that a dedicated ocean literacy strategy is being developed. And uh, this is our colleague Francesca Santoro, uh, the UNESCO office in Venice, who's, who's leading this work. And that, that strategy will also be open for, for comments and, and review by, by different group of stakeholders. So I really invite you to, um, to contact my colleagues and, uh, and there is already a, a good deal of uh, existing networks uh, working at, uh, on, on that topic. Okay, now a question from Kelly Switch. Uh, if you submit an ID during this call, do you need to wait until the next call to submit a decade action? Also, if you receive several decade action submissions that are similar, will you connect the application to ensure there isn't an overlap? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, the idea very much is that you can submit an idea this week and be ready in a month's time or two months time to submit the, the, the full proposal. It's really a, a way of getting your idea out there, starting to find potential partners, but at any time you can come back and, and submit a full, um, uh, a full submission. Or you can wait until the next submission in early, early next year if you need more time to, to develop it. But certainly it's not, it's not one or the other for the current, um, for the, for, for the current call. And yes, for the second part of the question, that is very much one of, of how we see our role as well at the IOC Secretariat. If there are several decade actions that are coming in that are similar and we see there are potential links, we will certainly be aiming to play that sort of behind the scenes connections role so that we're getting programs that are big, that are bold, that are ambitious, and that are really convening stakeholders around, around common issues. So yes, very much that's how we see one of the sort of the, the, the proactive roles that we should be taking um, to reduce overlapping and get the collective action that we need. Thank you. Uh, next question from Soro Yaya. Um, as part of a sub-regional project, how to list external collaborators? Is it possible at your level to make contact of specialists in the field available at regional level? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and to do this, um, this is why we have identified members of the executive planning group uh, and, uh, and, and provided their information contact um, because they allow, we have a, uh, and each of those members have been uh, uh, affiliated to either to a decade action or a decade outcome. So you can see which ones are dealing with what kind of topics, but we also have indicated the regions and, and also the working language of those EPG members. So please don't hesitate to contact them. We are here to, to help you to connect uh, with the different uh, collaborators. And, 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 and of course, the Secretariat, the IOC Secretariat can also uh, help you with this. We have a regional uh, uh, sub-commissions who are very active uh, also uh, the decade, on the decade. In, the, in Africa, in Southeast Asia, in, in the Caribbean region, and those can also be uh, uh, conduits for, for creating those connections. A question from Nis Aruda. How about project on Ocean Lissi that, that are already on progress in connecting the Portuguese speaking countries? Um, yeah, so again, I think we've talked about ocean literacy. Uh, and of course, uh, as part of um, as part of a this decade uh, action, we we do recognise that there are already existing uh, projects which are ongoing and and that may deserve uh, the endorsement of uh, of decade uh, decade uh, action uh, if they require the if they meet with the with the criteria. So that's uh, definitely something that can can be done. Whether is uh, should be done at the level of projects or, or, or program. I am not completely sure. Again, this will be important to see what is the landscape, the overall landscape of, uh, of actions on on the topic of social literacy. But I think uh, I think uh, such projects uh, part of a decade. Uh, I think would, would sort of make sense. Okay. Now moving back to Edward Sincondo. Uh, how can I find the potential partners? 
I think okay. this might be the same question that's, okay. that's come okay. up. Okay, moving on. Um, all right, from Anil Pratap Singh. I'm the head of a 24 years old NGO named Global Science Academy from Basi District in India. I am interested in knowing the funding resources and partners for spreading ocean literacy amongst businesses. I'm also promoting doing ocean science decade in my capabilities. Uh, so again, I think we we can put you in touch with uh, the different networks uh, out there. Um, and and, and uh, you know, again, just to clarify that uh, DK does not offer direct funding uh, resources for for endorse actions, but uh, we definitely uh, offer the network and the and the collaboration. Um, so we invite you to, uh, to to contact the IOC Secretariat, and we, we can see uh, also what's happening in, uh, in in your region. Uh, again, we have a, the IOC Westpac Secretariat and IOC Indio uh, sub commissions who also, I'm sure, are working on this issue of ocean literacy. So if there's a way that uh, we can uh, invite you to collaborate with these groups, uh, I think that would be very good. Okay, I have a question from Omnia Ibrahim. Um, the UNDK must focus on the implementation of the new projects that depend on the green nano technology and the cooperation with artificial intelligence and make the device that can overcome the drawbacks in oceans and climate change effects. The blue economy also may depend on the establishment of a great target with a preferred study. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, uh, I, I'm not really sure what the question is, but uh, definitely, I mean, we want to uh, to engage uh, and, and identify what are those uh, innovation that, uh, you know, the DK can, can start uh, promoting and, and can really uh, foster. Uh, we also want the technology uh, kind of a sector to be aware of the problems that we are trying to solve. Um, and, and it's really a kind of a dialogue that needs to take place uh, and I think we're very keen to see to, to foster this uh, this innovation networks and hubs uh, around the world to, and, and to also align them with the, the priority areas of the decade so that they can help us to come up with uh, uh, with innovation and, and new technologies to, to address those solutions. Okay, um, I have a question from Mohan Kumar. How an institute can be able to apply for a research funding opportunity? Um, again, I think uh, you know this is an invitation to uh, pose a decade action. Uh, this may result in in, in um, endorsement and eventually uh, you know bringing up a higher level of visibility to your to your actions. But again, just to be clear, this is not a, a funding. Um, a, 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 proposal that that is being uh, put forward this is ready to contribute to the um a question from panayota kuluri is endorsement in this call necessary in order to participate in over calls later at project level uh, no so that that question i think is clear um this uh, this is not a requirement again future calls will be open uh to 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 all type of stakeholders a uh, question from Sao Tome and Principe from Sonia Pessoa, um, works with an NGO. Uh, we are sharing ocean literacy with kids, would be the work of a group of a platform where we share and film program focused on ocean kids. Um, so I am not quite sure what the question here, but definitely, um, you know, we, we, we do encourage those national efforts uh, in, in ocean literacy, particularly targeting uh, the education system and, and schools. And this is very much aligned with um, the, 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 the audience uh, of the decade as well, because this is not just, we're not just talking about scientists, policy makers and, uh, and, and users. I think we need to invest as well in the, in the in youth. Um, so again, I, I, I invite you to, uh, to contribute to the review of the ocean literacy uh, strategy and, and, and help, uh, why not submit a proposal uh, for specific activities? Um, because I think what you, 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 you're focusing on 
uh, would be probably more at a local level, even though this can be part of a, of a wider regional or international network. Okay, I have a reposting from Senia, Senia Publica. I don't know if we've answered that one. Can an organization submit a global program to be endorsed and also? Yeah, I think we've, we've, we've I think we covered that one, just that it's technically not possible to have one app to, to apply for bo both through one application. So you will need to do two applications. Uh, okay, I have a question from uh, Dr. Sasaki from Tokyo University. Uh, I feel that there is a big gap between efforts uh, in the industry and ocean literacy, education in the field of education. Uh, I would like to know what the IC thinks about how to fill the gap between them. Uh, okay, I think that that question maybe is something that that should be taken uh, uh, outside of this. I think we I would, I would prefer to focus on question related to the call for action, but indeed, I mean, there's a need to uh, to address that that gap and uh, uh, the ocean literacy strategy, which is being developed, uh, also has a focus on the uh, engagement with the private sector and, and the industry. So I would, I would uh, again, I invite you to uh, to to look at that uh, that strategy when it's available. Uh, our colleague uh, Aya Okamoto, um, I would like to know how do you evaluate each actions after the project will be finished? Will each action be required to report to you? Also, it would be appreciated if you could provide the time schedule and details of oracles. Okay, I listen. You are to. Yeah, excellent questions and getting down into the sort of some of the operational detail there. There will be an annual reporting requirement for each action um, to the Decade Coordinating Coordination Unit. And this is really to allow us to be able to collect information that we can use to monitor the overall progress and impact of the of the decade. So it's not an evaluation as such, but it's really collecting information so that again, this collective and shared effort can be monitored and tracked and we can see where there are gaps and where efforts may need to be focused in the in the future. But as I said, we will keep that monitoring um, task as light as possible because we know that you're all reporting and, and, and monitoring to, to different partners. We don't yet have the time schedule and detail of other calls. We are anticipating that at the program level, there will probably be two calls per year. At the project level, it will depend a little bit on the the, the, the proponent of the program because we need them to set out the best uh, timing for the for the calls um, and it may be that others will be dependent on resources becoming available or different thematic or geographic priorities that emerge throughout the decade. So I would say for the program to be determined throughout national and regional level events. If you're really talking about events in terms of workshops or conferences and meetings, it's more into the category of state actions. Um, and as of early next year, activities, well, standard type events, will be able to be registered at any any time. Um, as of as of early next year, you will not need to wait for a call for actions for those. Okay, thank you, Alison. So um, I'm now looking at the time, and I'm afraid, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that we're running out of uh, of time. Uh, we have many more questions uh, which are posted, so I, I, I mm. unfortunately we are not going to have time to go through uh, all of this. But what we will do, and uh, we can commit to that, is that we will make a, a download of all those questions and and uh, come back to you with uh, succinct but uh, accurate yeah. answers. Uh, so that we we can again uh, encourage you to to work uh, with your peers, with uh, the ones you don't know yet, you should work with, uh, and and help uh, in preparing this first call for action for uh, you know, stimulating and transformative actions. So I think we will um, just to to be uh, accurate with our timing, we will uh, we close this session. Uh, today again, I want to thank you for your for your great participation. I think we've uh, uh, we have now still 127 participants on board. Um, uh, I hope uh, that we have provided you with uh, sufficient uh, uh, information for you to proceed. Again, 
this is uh, this is not the first nor the last. Uh, it is the first, but it's not the last call for action. There will be more calls to come in the coming years. But uh, we remain at your disposal for uh, additional uh, information that you may require. And again, we will also have a, a second round of uh, Q&A session on the 6th of November. Um, this one will start uh, early from Paris. I think we will also start at 8 o'clock uh, Paris time on, on the 6th of November. So again, if, if, you, if you would like to continue this discussion and, and, and raise additional questions, I invite you to, uh, to join. Uh, with this, uh, I thank Alison very much for all your answers. And thank you, Isabel. Um, and we wish you uh, a good day. Uh, keep safe. And uh, again, uh, we look forward to receiving uh, ideas and, and innovative uh, actions for the cave. Thank you very much. Have a good day.